Today, we're going to be trying out Revi OS. A lot of people in my comments have been telling me to check this out, so let's get into it. Now, if you don't know what Revi OS is, it's basically a custom version of Windows 10 and Windows 11. So it's similar to GGOS and Atlas OS. It's a stripped down version. All of the bloatware and telemetry has been completely removed from the operating system, and it's really fast and apparently very good for gaming. So yeah, this is their website, as you can see here. I'll leave a link to it in the description down below if you want to go ahead and check it out. But yeah, so basically you're greeted with this when you first launch the site. So these are all the features here. So it's faster performance, better privacy, stability as well. Very, very good. So yeah, let's go to download here. And there's a couple of different versions of Rev iOS. So you can get Rev iOS based on Windows 10 22H2 here. And there's also Rev iOS based on Windows 11. As you can see here, we've got downloads for that. So the minimum system requirements is a one gigahertz dual core processor, two gigs of RAM. But yeah, I'm pretty sure most of you guys will fit these minimum system requirements here. And by default, Secure Boot and TPM are disabled. So if your computer doesn't run Windows 11, it will run Rev iOS 11, which is really good. So yeah, let's go ahead and download it. I'm going to go for the Windows 11 version because it looks pretty cool now you do get forwarded to this shrink me advert thing just either have an ad blocker on or just be very careful where you click and then hopefully we should then get the link but yeah now we're on mega so it's pretty simple you just download it and the iso should begin downloading all right so the iso has just finished downloading as you can see i've dragged it to my desktop here now yeah my desktop looks pretty nice if i do say so myself i've been working on customizing it if you guys want to see a video on this and how i got it all set up like this then definitely let me know in the comments but yeah i just love the layout of my desktop right now it's so good and and next up, as always, you're going to need one of these things. It's a USB flash drive. And then we're going to use Rufus to burn this ISO to our USB drive. All right. So as you can see here, it has found our USB. Last time I used this, it was for Nabara Linux. If you want to check out that video, I'll leave it on the top right. Let's go ahead and select our ISO. It'll give you a warning saying that all the data on it will be destroyed. So if you've got anything important on your USB, please back it up. Otherwise, you will lose it. All right. So our ISO has finally finished. That did take quite a while. So yeah, let's go ahead, unplug the USB, plug it into my low end PC here and let's get switched over. All right, guys, so I'm in the BIOS of my low end PC right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and go to the boot menu by pressing F8. And we're going to select the SanDisk UEFI, which is our USB stick. And that should boot us into the Revi OS installer. Now, if you guys didn't see my last video where I actually upgraded my low-end PC, as you guys know, I did throw a graphics card in there. However, I've actually gone ahead and uh, I've removed it. So we're running off integrated graphics. So this will hopefully keep things fair. Right, so we're in the setup here. Pretty standard Windows 11 install kind of thing here. I don't really care about the data that was on this originally. So we're just going to go ahead and quickly erase the drive. I wouldn't recommend erasing your drive this way. But yeah, we're just going to do that just for the sake of time. All right, so here we are in the Rev iOS 11 setup. So that was pretty straightforward. It just installed as normal, restarted, and here we are. So yeah, it's a pretty standard setup here, but it'd be very interesting to see if it asks like the standard telemetry questions and stuff, or if they've been removed, that would be quite interesting. Then yeah, just keyboard layout, and that's it. We just need to just put our name here. You can set up a password as well if you want. I'm not gonna bother. Wow, that is literally just the setup. So it's language, keyboards, username, boom, it's done. No questions, nothing like that. No having to skip through questions or even, it doesn't even require you to use a Microsoft account either. It's just a local account as standard. And here we go, it's already loading up Windows. All right, so first thing that's come up is this. Rev iOS is being prepared. Please do not close the window. So yeah, basically we just need to leave it to do its thing, I'm guessing. All right, so the tool has just finished doing its thing and here we are on Rev iOS for the first time. So as you can see here, in terms of stuff that's come pre-installed, we've got Brave Browser and we've got the revision tool. If we go to our start menu here, go to all apps. Wow, very minimal. All the essential stuff you need really. There is Xbox and Game Bar if you're doing any kind of gaming, your phone, settings, notepad, calculator, very, very minimal. I like this. And yeah, it's built off a fairly new version of Windows 11. As you can see, we've got the search bar here compared to a search icon in older versions. Let's have a look at the revision tool here and see what it does. So we can go into security. We can enable and disable Windows Defender. This is a pretty cool tool, actually. This genuinely looks like something Microsoft have made. Notification 
notifications are really annoying so we'll turn them off we can go to windows 11 here we can go the new context menu or the old one so if you don't know what that means when i right click on windows 11 it brings up all of the options here that you want but if you compare that to the new one you have to do two clicks just to right click on one thing it's really annoying whereas this basically just disables that and we've got the old context menu back which is really good and you can also enable and disable windows updates as well which is really good so maybe if you've just setting this up you want windows updates for your drivers and stuff but after that turn it off and that's that it's really good so yeah this is the file explorer here so let's just go ahead and eject our usb and as you can see we've got pop-up balloon notifications here which is i haven't seen since windows 7 that is really cool if we go ahead and view our specs here these are the specs we're rocking with and yeah it's 22 h2 windows 11 pro so by default it is activated i'm not really too sure how legal that is and yeah as you can see windows update if i try and click on it it just doesn't work so you need to enable it through the revision tool and then that should be able to work oh that is super cool so if we right click on the taskbar here, by default, it just gives you taskbar settings and that's it. And yeah, I've always had the habit of right clicking on the taskbar and going to task manager. But since Windows 11, they've removed that and it's been so annoying. But I'm so happy to see, look, you can just go to your task manager just like that. And the task manager looks really cool as well. And as you can see, our resources are pretty minimal. 2% CPU. 15% memory. We've got 59 processes, which isn't too bad whatsoever. As you can see, it's a very minimal disk usage as well. Just the operating system alone doesn't take up that much storage. I have seen ISOs that take up a lot less than that, but they're very minimal. No Windows update out of the box and uh, very basic, but this one's good. It combines user experience, usability, and it's very minimal, not a lot of bloatware. And uh, it's just a good middle ground, I'd say, this operating system. This is the perfect option, honestly. There's a version for Windows 10, Windows 11, like I've got here. All right, let's go ahead and check out the gaming performance on this thing. So by default, we have got Brave Browser. Let me know if you use Brave Browser in the comments down below. Obviously, Brave Browser is built off Chromium, and it's very tempting to switch to that, honestly, as a Firefox user. All right, let's go ahead and install Minecraft and see what the gaming performance is like on RevIOS. All right, so I've installed Minecraft on RevIOS 11. It was a little bit difficult because I'm not logged into the Microsoft Store, so I had to get the old Minecraft launcher, and I also had to install my graphics drivers and Java, and it was a massive pain, but I've got it working, and here I've got a vanilla 1.8.9 installation. Let's just go ahead and make a quick creative world here and see what the performance is like. So obviously in my last video, I got well over a 1,000 FPS thanks to my GTX 1060, but we're back on integrated graphics now, so let's see how it runs i guess and yeah we're getting a pretty respectable 50 fps okay we've dropped dropped down a little bit but still you know it's just under 60 fps on default settings nothing turned down or anything in fact i think we probably have vsync on yeah we've got vsync on so yeah pretty good performance let's go ahead and put some settings down oh, yeah there we go much better we're getting well over 100 fps now just under sometimes if we're kind of loading in chunks and if we go to our task manager here and as you can see there isn't a lot really going on in the background so there's java obviously which is minecraft there's gaming services minecraft my graphics card driver but other than that there's not a lot really going on and there's only 39 windows processes as well that's crazy yeah honestly i would probably use this on my main system honestly if i had a bad computer Let's go ahead and try out the latest version and then we'll try and do some PvP. All right, so I'm just loading up Minecraft 1.19.3. So we've actually had a little update since I last did one of these tests. Whoa, what is this? Is this part of the new update or is this a glitch? Why is it loading so weird? Oh, that looks really trippy. All right, so here we are on Minecraft 1.19.3 and the performance is really bad. I keep lag spiking. I keep getting like 3 FPS, 19 FPS sometimes. Okay, now it's playable. Maybe we're just loading in there. Still, we're kind of spiking in FPS. Ah, here we go. So it's a little bit better now, I'm getting about 70 FPS. So yeah, it's perfectly playable. It just needs a little bit of sorting out, like with drivers and stuff. And it's quite interesting to finally see an operating system that's based off such a new version of Windows, because normally they're always based off of old versions. All right, so I've just installed Lunar Client on this system, and the FPS has improved even more. As you can see, we're getting a solid 100 FPS here, whereas before it was just slightly 
nearly 100, sometimes a little under. But yeah, solid 120 FPS now using Lunar Client 1.8.9. And yeah, it's a nice playable experience. As always, Rev iOS is really good. No background processes or anything nasty like that. It's just overall a really nice operating system. Definitely worth checking out. And it's definitely up there with GGOS and Atlas OS. Yeah, I'm excited to check out more operating system videos on my channel. And hopefully next time I do a tier list video, I'll have a lot more to talk about. Right, so we're in the famous Hypixel lobby test here. And surprisingly, even with players turned on, we're still getting over 60 FPS, which is really good. Without any lag, which is really good. So yeah, let's hop in and do some PvP now. Oh my god, I'm rusty. Luckily this guy isn't too good. Go on. Yes, there we go. GG. Yeah, lots of people enjoyed my PvP videos. Some people didn't. It's just one of those things, really. I'm trying out different things on my channel. And yeah, the one thing that I noticed really about YouTube and just looking at the analytics and stuff, but not many people watch my videos like all the way through. They kind of skip parts or they get disinterested. And it's something I've been trying to work on. I might be switching up my content slightly, but we'll see. I'm kind of happy with the way it is right now. Like I don't do YouTube for the views or anything like that. But if something does work for me, I will try and like double down on it. That's just like what every YouTuber does. But yeah, if you're still watching this video, comment down below. Um, comment duel as in like high pixel duels. Comment that in the comments and I'll start hiding some of the comments because I appreciate you guys watching my videos all the way through. And if you are interested in shorts, I'll leave my shorts channel in the description. I've actually started uploading low NPC videos on there. Don't shoot me. Yes, there we go. GG. Yeah, so uh, yeah, commentary and gaming is not really uh, something I really do much of anymore. I'm definitely going to do more giveaways next year as well. I know a lot of people always want like premium Minecraft accounts and stuff. I've got Notro Client and stuff in the works as well. So that's going to be uh, hopefully releasing next year sometimes. So make sure you look out for that. That's going to be really exciting and possibly very big for my channel. And just as a project in general, it's going to be really exciting to see where that goes. If you guys are still watching, then you are a real one. Honestly, thank you for watching. If you've watched all the way through, leave a like on this video if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And yeah, I will see you in my next video. Peace.